Today we're going to show you how to change the auger assembly on your refrigerator and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver and a pair of slip joint pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair we're going to start by opening the freezer door and first we're just going to reach in and lift up on the shutoff lever on the ice maker, turn that off. Then we'll lift up on the bin at the front, pull it completely out, and then we're going to set it on a suitable work surface where we can do the repair. All right, the first step in this repair will be to remove the front cover from the ice bin assembly. It's held in place with four quarter inch hex head screws. There are two on each side. And you'll note that there's a third screw on the side. That's actually to hold the housing cover for the crusher blades. So we'll just start by removing two of the screws on this side. Leave the bottom one in place. Just flip that over and do the same on the opposite side. And then just slide that cover off and we'll set it aside. Now next we're going to remove the mounting bracket and spring that control the crusher arm. We suggest releasing the tension on that spring carefully. So just press down on it, pull it forward so that the hook disengages from that rod and then let it rotate around. We'll next remove the quarter inch screw that holds the bracket in place. And just lift up on that arm, slide that bracket along, rotate it, and it will lift right off. Now next we'll remove the two screws on the bottom of the bin that hold the crusher housing to the bin. And then we'll just flip that up right. And we'll remove the two quarter inch hex head screws on the inside that hold that housing to the bin. You can now carefully slide that whole assembly and the auger away from the bin and we'll set the bin aside. Now the auger is held into that assembly with an E-ring on the front and then a nylon nut. Now it's not necessary to remove that E-ring. You should be able to just unthread that nylon nut. Now it's a left-hand thread, so what we'll do is we'll take our slip joint pliers. And there are two flat sides on that nut, so we'll just grasp those securely. And then we're going to rotate the auger clockwise as we face that and that will unthread it. Now we're only going to take that part way out just enough that that nut will disengage because we we'll want to inspect how all those crusher blades are attached to it. So we'll set that nut in the E-ring and then this large thrust washer. We'll set those aside and carefully stand the assembly up, then look inside to see how those blades are attached to the shaft. And carefully lift the cover off. And then we have the assembly in our hand. Now the crusher assembly is made up of three blades that are keyed to the auger shaft and two fixed blades that are attached to this little plastic block that sits into the housing. So to remove them, there's a series of spacers between each of the blades. We'll start with a single thin nylon washer, and then a blade, and the blades are numbered or lettered. They start from closest to the housing back with blade A, B, and C. Next, a thick spacer, and then the two fixed blades and the middle blade can come off as one complete piece, and then you can slide the blade out of the middle. You'll note that the two spacers in those fixed blades have a narrow dimension and a wide dimension, 
the narrow dimensions will fit into the actual opening on that fixed blade and the two flat larger diameters will be in the middle. So we can set that aside. Next we have a thick spacer again. Our first blade and then another stepped spacer and the narrow end will face towards the auger. And pull the back cover off of that housing. Just set that aside. We'll remove the large plastic wheel at the front of that and it has two flat sides on it so it actually turns with the auger shaft. We can discard the old auger shaft. Now the new wire auger comes with a small stainless steel washer and that will go on first. The next we'll install the large plastic wheel and again is two flat sides on it so it will only go on one of two ways. We'll next start installing the spacers and blades. So first the stepped spacer, the narrow end in first. Our next step will be to put the back cover on. And there is a circular protrusion on the back side of that that will go over the end of the auger first. And next we'll install our spacers. We'll start with the step spacer, narrow end on first. And blade number A, and it will be stamped on the blade. Next, a wide spacer. And then we're going to put the two fixed blades, spacers, and the middle blade all on as one complete piece. So we'll start by putting the two step spacers into the assembly. We'll also squeeze that center blade into the middle of it. Now you will have to rotate that center blade until the flats of that shaft line up on the auger shaft inside the whole assembly in. Next, another thick spacer. The last blade, the thin spacer, and then we're ready to install it into the crusher housing. Now we'll rotate this fixed block and insert the little peg into that opening. So we'll stand the auger on its end. Now when reinstalling the crusher housing over the crusher blades, we'll need to locate this block that holds the two fixed blades and that will slide into this little channel here and it will only go in one way so we have to make sure that when we lower that housing down over it that it fits into that spot. So we'll just maneuver that housing over the top And then just let the end of that auger shaft protrude through the end and then we'll put that plastic nut and washer on. And then while we hold those pieces together, we'll next take our large flat washer, set it over that shaft and then we'll take the nylon nut with the E-ring and keeping in mind it is a left hand thread so we're going to turn it counterclockwise to install it. We'll need to make sure that it goes inside of that thrust washer as well as the opening in the housing. Then you can rotate that auger shaft to thread it on.
and then we'll take the pliers to tighten it. Now next we'll reinstall the bearing on the back of the auger. Now there is a square opening in the that rear bearing that fits over the end of that auger shaft. So it simply just sits in place like that and the bearing will rest up against the back of the auger. Now at this point we can take the bin and insert the whole assembly into that. If you wish you can leave that rear bearing off until we've pushed it through the front of the housing. And we're going to make sure that this lip on the bin goes below the round front plastic portion of that auger. So just before we have it completely installed, we'll slide that rear bearing on. And then make sure it protrudes through the back and that the front housing lays flush up against the bin. Now at this point, we can install two screws on the inside. Now take note when we're tightening those screws that the rear bearing doesn't slip out of place and bind up. If that happens, you may end up cracking the housing and I certainly don't want to do that. So line up the second screw inside. Now these screws need to be tight, but be careful not to over tighten them so that we don't strip the plastic or crack the housing. So snug them up and we can rotate the bin upside down and install the two on the bottom. And again, make sure that we don't strip those. Check to make sure that bearing is still turning freely. Now we can reinstall the spring and mounting bracket on the back. So we'll take that little mounting clip, we'll sit it over top of the shaft, rotate it so that the hole in that clip is towards the center of the bin. We'll sit it up on top of that mounting tab. Install the screw. We need to make sure that, that spring is on the back side of that mounting tab before we install this. Just tighten that. Now the end of the spring that has the sharp 90 degree hook on it, you'll see that there's a little groove cut in that mounting tab. We'll lay that spring into that groove and then we're going to rotate the back end of that spring around the shaft and hook it under the back end of it. And that will provide tension on the little chute at the front that comes up against the crusher blades. We can now rotate the whole assembly upright and we'll put the cover back on. So just slide the cover up tight against the bin. You'll note that it's notched out at the top to accept that cover. So we'll just put one of the top screws in and then one on the bottom on that same side. Rotate the bin around. We place the screws on the opposite side. And we're now ready to put the assembly back into the refrigerator. So to reinstall, we're simply going to open the freezer door. We'll line the bin up with the shelf rails on the top. Slide it completely in, make sure it's hooked. So when we pull on it, it won't come out. Then we'll reach in and flip down the shutoff arm. And our repair is complete.